You know, a little bit of cloud coverage right now, but the temperature is still in the 40s. Let me give you some historical perspective. If kickoff were right now, we'd be looking at the second coldest Super Bowl in history. The coldest was 39 degrees. But to give you even more perspective, the last time Peyton Manning played in the Super Bowl against the Saints, it was in Miami. You're talking about a difference of about 15 degrees. That kickoff was about 60 degrees. So really, we thought we were going to be making history out here, Rich. But actually, it looks like it's just going to be another day. A nice one at that. You guys are in that bubble over there. You can come out any time now. It's not too bad out here, Rich. No, speak for yourself, brother. I'm going to stay right in here. <laughs> Jeff Darlington in Landover, Maryland. Jeff? Rich, I'll tell you what, the weather not too bad just yet, but it's expected to deteriorate throughout the game. A wintry mix is what they're calling for. And the field conditions are a concern at this point. I'm told by team sources that they're concerned not only about the passing game, but about the running game. Guys were slipping last week when the weather wasn't even all that inclement. About a month ago, they re the field in between the numbers. However, I'm told that that sodding has still caused plenty of slipping. Rich, Tom Brady set the tone this week in the wake of the absence of Rob Gronkowski by saying, quite simply, we're not making excuses. But make no mistake, the Patriots do feel the loss of Gronkowski. As Matthew Slater said, we're not robots. We understand this makes us a weaker team. Now, I'd expect Shane Vereen to see more targets. That's the buzz in the Patriots locker room. Rich, the Seahawks will be without three starters on their offensive line, both tackles and their all-pro center. That's terrible timing for Seattle, who will need to find a way to stop one of the best players in the NFL. This guy, J.J. Watt. And the, the, the day under the tarp. The tarp's <laughs> off now. The field is out in the open air, and so are you, Jeff. Good morning. Rich, I'm back out in the cold. It was quite warm underneath the tarp, actually, and that is, in fact, the purpose. They pump warm air underneath the field to make sure that they can soften it. Now, I talked to Ed Mangan, who's actually in charge of making sure that the field is apt, and, and really, he said that it has been in great shape the past several days. Now, they did have the freezing conditions earlier in the week. That's the reason why you do have to make sure that you can soften it up. And I'll tell you what, the Dolphins had a very gutsy win against the Chargers, especially that offensive line. This week will have to be even better. I'm told that Mike Pouncey will be out for this game. The team's center was having trouble keeping food down all week, could not put the weight back on that he lost due to this undisclosed illness. I'm hearing that it still has to do with his gallbladder. They're still trying to avoid surgery. But Mike Pouncey will be out of this game. I talked with Jeff Darlington, who is inside MetLife Stadium. He also has a great spot right there on the center of the I action. Do. He was our weatherman all day, but I ha uh, understand you have some kicking news for us right now. I'm so close to the action now that I can tell you how inconsequential these conditions actually will be. We already know that this probably isn't even going to be the second coldest game, probably the third coldest Super Bowl in Super Bowl history. But Matt Prater was out there in midfield easily knocked through a 60-yard field goal, and it has to do with the wind. There is zero wind out here. Now, Prater on Wednesday was out here. He said that the biggest problem you can have in some of these conditions isn't necessarily the cold weather, but the wind. But as we can tell out here, I mean, honestly, there is zero wind. It might be three, four miles per hour, and the forecast is saying that that should hold up throughout the entirety of this game, guys. Jeff, it's so hard to believe, especially after you bought all those coats this week. Right. And you were going to be our weatherman, we that it is balmy and in the mid 50s. I'm not complaining. Rich, Mooch was just talking about the importance of the running game in the outdoor cold weather. Well, here in the Dome, it's also going to be important. Jamal Charles, two weeks ago, after the first series against the Colts, had just 69 yards in that game. Charles wants to get more action this week. As Chuck Pagano said, he would be surprised if Charles had fewer than 30 carries in this game. Rich, Rich, the, the football gods just keep shining down on the Kansas City Chiefs. Another pretty good matchup again for them today. When you consider the fact that the Chiefs are leading the NFL with 35 sacks, a wide margin there. The Browns, meanwhile, giving up more sacks than every other team except for the Jaguars some injuries to keep in mind that make this a very different game. Eric Fisher, as you said, is out. Tamba Hali for the Chiefs. Looks like he might try to play. He's going to try to get the swelling down in his knee. That'll heal. In fact, the closest anyone has gotten was Marshawn Lynch with 98 yards. That's exactly the average, 98 yards that Lynch has had in the past five times he's played the 49ers defense. So how do the 49ers stop him? 
Linebacker Navarro Bowman says, don't shoot your gun and just expect Lynch to go down. You've got to be fundamentally sound. You've got to get in front of him. And even after that first hit, you've got to wrap him up and get him down. I talked to several players who say the biggest mistake you can make in playoff football is getting away from the fundamentals. That's what Bowman and the 49ers defense is preaching as they prepare for the deadly Marshawn Lynch. Now for more on the Seahawks, let's go to Steve White. Let me toss it to Jeff Darlington down in South Beach. Thank you, Kurt. You know, we talk so much about the Patriots' resiliency. We talk so much about their ability to overcome adversity. But let's, for a second, talk about the Miami Dolphins. I have spent time on the sideline talking to Dolphins employees, staff members, players, even fans, and all of them can sense that they have a huge opportunity today to really change things, to really shift the momentum in their favor. In other words, it's all there for the taking for this Dolphins team. Day. We got the inactives here. Eugene Monroe, the team's new tackle that was acquired via trade this week, will not play. Jacoby Jones, the wide receiver, will not play either. Now, I just talked to Dolphins general manager Jeff Ireland. He tells me that Cameron Wake is active and will have a significant role in this game. That's very important for this defense. Ireland also mentioning that a defense that has been largely banged up is much healthier this week.